Welcome to, uh, I, I still don't know what to call this, I'll talk about that more at the end, but we're going to discuss something near and dear to my heart, near and dear technically to everybody's heart, especially women's hearts, because it's, it's boobs, and boobs are kind of heart-placed. Yeah, Mortal Kombat 11, causing a stir. <laughs> So what you just saw uh, there, that way, is Mortal Kombat 11's intro, or like the, the reveal, I suppose, some footage from the reveal of Mortal Kombat 11, and people were kind of excited. I mean, they saw all the violence and they saw all the blood and gore, and I will say, and I will preface this one, by the way, by saying there might be some violent footage in this one. I intentionally sort of kept that bit safe. But if you do not like violence, this might be one you don't look at the video too much for. Uh, because, yeah, there's there's a lot of violence with Mortal Kombat. It's just, it's part and parcel with Mortal Kombat, right? That's how the game is kind of marketed and branded, right? Mortal Kombat is the super violent, oh god, he's just ripped that man's face off and eaten his brain. Oh my god, that guy slapped that guy so hard in the back of his head, his head popped off. Like, it's really over the top really really over the top violence insanely over the top violence it is in my mind and the, the best way i can sum it up it's the immature example of maturity right it's the maturity that's going to get you an m rating on the game but it's not the sort of maturity that you know an adult will go hmm yes this is a very mature thing to be doing when you're impaling this person with their own blood and then stabbing one through the head so that their eye pops out the other side that's that's not what maturity actually means and i often liken mortal kombat 11 to what i call like the the slasher fix fix the slasher flicks of the 80s which is the you know the sort of movies are called like gym bloodbath sevens you know stuff like that where it's just a bunch of women doing aerobics and then they all get stabbed right tons of those movies were made they're there for the violence and they're there for a little bit of titillation as well the reason why I mention that is because Mortal Kombat 11 has also been doing rounds in the usual places. It's been talked about absolutely everywhere. Is Mortal Kombat 11 censoring its women? Is it covering up too much? Are the women too unsexy? And then people are going, well, yes, the SJWs have come in and they're taking away our sexy video games again. Oh my god, look at Scarlet. She's all covered up. She used to look like this. And now she looks like this way more covered up and way more sort of you know oh that's so much more restrained oh my god they've destroyed the game they're ruining absolutely everything and i have to say i think there is a nugget of truth in there not like oh that's actually what's happened you know there's a conspiracy headed up by anita sarkeesian to come and destroy all gamers rise up oh we live in a society no that's not really what's happening here but i do think that they have intentionally like covered up the women to try and get this grasp at what they consider to be legitimacy now then there's a lot to preface here because i actually went off and i did a bit of research i like to sort of do a bit of reading around the topic and one of the things i actually did as an experiment was i looked at mortal kombat 9 which is extremely heavy on the fan service to an insane degree i would say where it's just you know big bolt-on looking boobs uh bimbo body sort of proportions everybody's naked and it's kind of awkward and a bit greasy looking in terms of just ew uh, and then mortal kombat 10 came out afterwards and that reigned in quite a lot but it still had its elements of fan service here and there but it was i dare say a little more tasteful just just a little bit right it's still not what i would consider tasteful material but it's it's more restrained and now Mortal Kombat 11 seems to be going even further with the restraint. Now, we don't have great examples yet. There's not all the characters revealed, but this is sort of the thing that's being discussed about at the moment. And exactly the same thing happened between Mortal Kombat 9 and Mortal Kombat 10, which is people saying, oh my god, they're ruining the game. They've cut up all the women. All the, the girls have man faces. By the way, can I just address... Can we stop doing this and showing like screenshots of people in like making expressions when you know they're going eh, ah, er, all that kind of stuff it, it's going to look bad it's always going to look bad you know those instagram models that look perfect in every single picture and they're always like mm, mm. you know all that kind of stuff well that's lighting photography a good pose and a little bit of photoshop sprinkled in if you take a screenshot of that person as they're having a sneeze they're probably not going to look quite as attractive so stop taking pictures of people making expressions or from angles that are unflattering and going oh my god they've uglified the game it just doesn't make you sound more legitimate it makes you sound like a bit of an idiot 
I'm not going to lie. And as games get more photorealistic and start using more face scan tech, you're gonna see that quite a lot, by the way. Not everybody looks perfect all the time. I can't help but think that people who like that, who sort of make that sort of comparison, they grew up at the same era that I did, or a little bit later perhaps, with like the PlayStation 1 era, and they're so used to seeing faces just be like these flat polygons with a, a face dot JPEG on it, that they don't understand how a real face works. Perhaps. Maybe that's just me. I got, I got a bit sidelined there. So here's the thing with Mortal Kombat 11. Yes, they've reined in Scarlet's design, especially Sonya's always kind of been a bit you know, more covered up, especially in the more modern games. She's always had this sort of military full body cover look uh, that isn't too revealing, except again in Mortal Kombat 9, where everything was just kind of overdone and over the top. My concern with this is that they might be doing it for the wrong reason, and this seems to be coming a bit of a trend in fighting games. Fighting games in general are kind of a, a bit of a dying breed, but still kind of trucking on. Like, fighting games have always kind of just kind of gone on underneath the surface, but never really broken out into, like, the huge mainstream popularity that a lot of other series ex uh, enjoy. The clear sort of... I guess anti-example is Smash Brothers, but Smash Brothers is a whole other kettle of fish. There's a pile of reasons why that game's slightly different. Street Fighter is generally regarded as like the most popular fighting game around, and probably the one with the most market penetration. Mortal Kombat is a, a kind of a similar series, right? It has a huge legacy behind it, including a couple of movies behind it and under its belt. It is extremely old, and they're both kind of from the same era. But there's a lot of other fighting games out there that have been suffering lately, one of which has also drawn similar notoriety, that being Dead or Alive 6. Now, Dead or Alive to me has always been that series that if someone saw you playing it, you know, like on Discord, how you have little things under your name if you don't turn that feature off that says, oh, they're playing this. If someone had that and it said they're playing Dead or Alive, you'd probably feel a bit embarrassed, right? You'd probably go, ew, ew, it's a bit weird. Right? And you'd see them playing it on Steam, for example, and you probably do the same. It's a little bit, it's a game with a reputation, shall we say. And I went looking around for sort of various examples around complaints of sort of this nature, and I found a brilliant interview by the creative director, I do believe, of Dead or Alive 6. Now, Dead or Alive has been drawing similar flack to what Mortal Kombat has been doing. They've sort of reined in a lot of the, of the, the, jiggly, the jiggly bits that the game was so known for, and they've covered up a lot more. Much probably to the, the chagrin, I think, of the creative director who sees this as kind of like, well, this is what the West has sort of pushed on us. We don't want to do this, but we're having to do it anyway because we want to sell in Europe and North America, not just in Japan. And so, yeah, they, they've had to go and do this. And there's this brilliant nugget from this interview. I'll, I'll put the, the link to the interview in the description, but here's the screenshot of it. And let me just read it to you because it's, oh, I love it so much. I did notice that there are quite a few very revealing costumes. Of course, I'd like the fan to enjoy that, but please don't talk too loudly about it. The more attention this draws, the less I can do it. Shh. If you really want to have nice costumes, please quietly enjoy them so we can keep making them. I'll just, I'll just let you, you think on that. Because I think this this is like the, the dirty secret of the, the fighting game world at the moment, which is that a lot of people are playing these games for this kind of titillation. This is very apparent in Street Fighter, it's certainly apparent in Mortal Kombat 9 and in Dead or Alive, it's absolutely apparent in Soul Calibur that wears it on its shoulder, and I think that's why I don't mind Soul Calibur as much, because Soul Calibur never descri like hid this. It never sort of said, yeah, if you, if you want some of this, you want some boobs on your character, you want some cleavage, oh, well, you've got to come here and you've got to buy it extra. It's got to cost you more. Right? It never misled you like that. They were just always there. So it's probably a little bit of an insane degree, kind of distracting at times, to be honest, but it was front and center and they knew very well what they were doing. They're not trying to sneak it in by the back door. And this is something that Street Fighter sort of has been doing as well, where you notice how they've been monetizing that game over the long term. Well, it's been with costume packs, and a lot of those costume packs, yeah, you can kind of imagine. Now, my concern is this, right? Street Fighter, not Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat showed its sort of customization system, probably spelt with a K as well, because they spell everything with a K. What's wrong with spelling things properly? Oh, right, they've got a brand. Uh, yeah, they, they have like this customization system. They showed off Scorpion. It's like, you can have different masks. You can have different masks, and you can have a different sword, and you can have a different 
stabby thing, a different spear, they call it, even though it's like it's on a chain. But yeah, you can have a different spear, and you can do all these little different customizations and make him all look different and wear different outfits and have different costume pieces and all this kind of stuff. And my brain went DLC straight away. Maybe even loot boxes, you have different masks of different rarity, or you've got the legendary mask of Jing J Fu, and he's it looks like this, and it breathes fire every so often, and you know, you can see where it's going very, very quickly. And I can just absolutely see them going, well, people want Scarlet's original con uh, like original looking outfit or outfit from so-and-so game. Well, we'll just bundle that into something, charge $5 for it and make absolute bank because people want that kind of titillation and we're going to sneak it in by the back door. And that kind of annoys me. I suppose. I think it's that dishonesty where it's like, okay, well, what we'll do is we'll cover everybody up in the original release, and that's going to give us brownie points with Kotaku and with all these sort of very, very, like, all the, the Twitterverse and all that kind of stuff. And then what we're going to do is we're going to just sneak it all in anyway and then try and pander to the market that wants the boobs and wants the bums and wants all that kind of stuff in the game without upsetting anybody. And in my mind, it's just kind of at this point, just own it. You know, your your fan base, the game's maturity rating is going to be like 16 plus or whatever, so just just own it. You know, why, why not just own it? Instead of trying to do all this backdoor, sneaking it in kind of stuff, just admit what you are and what you're looking to peddle. Now, the reason why I have a concern about this, and the reason why this particularly caught my eye, is that, yeah, fighting games have kind of been on the ropes for a long time. Like, fighting games don't traditionally do well. They kind of sell okay, and then they instantly kind of die off anyway. A very hardcore community tends to stay behind, but then that community therefore becomes kind of impenetrable to new players, so no one actually goes and picks it up uh, and plays online anymore because it's just way too hard. The people who stay and play Soul Calibur at the moment, for example, a couple of months after release, are going to be very practiced and very good at the game. If you're a new player who wants to get into that game, well, good luck because all the other new players have gone. You've got to pick up fighting games kind of at the start. If you don't, you've missed out. NetherRealm Studios actually does very well in getting around this by including a lot of single player content, but to me, well, that single player content has kind of the issue where you just go and to YouTube and type Mortal Kombat 10 or cutscenes, and then you get to enjoy all of that without paying $60, right? That's, that's kind of an issue with that system. So in my mind, getting a huge, huge, like as many people into the game as possible is very important. And the kind of people that are going to complain about, you know, oh, that woman's boobs are a little bit too big and a little bit too front and center to be realistic or palatable, they're probably not also going to be people buying the game. You want the people buying the game. Of course, you want to do it for the right reasons as well. You don't want to go down that dead or alive route where there's kind of a reputation, like a, a, a funk around that game, I suppose, where people kind of are worried about buying it for being judged. And yeah, you know, I made an example of judging someone playing it earlier on just as kind of a, an example of what would happen. But you want to sort of be able to walk the line of, okay, we're not going overboard. They they call it like etchy in Japan, where it's just like clear fan service. Like this is what this function is. It's not quite pornography, but it's getting there. And it's kind of towing the line between what's actually allowed and what actually isn't. You don't want to sort of enter into that realm, but you do want to enter into the realm of, okay, well, we're going to get in the people who have waifus and who want to see my leaner wearing nothing but a, a strip of fabric, which to me was insane. That outfit always looked insane, but hey, some people might be really into that. I will also say after the fact, like this this bit's been edited in, you can tell I'm, I'm glowing a bit more because the sun's come out even more as well. It's very early in the morning. Um... Yeah, there is an argument to be made as well that the type of people that will buy into... I've got my headphones on as well, which are going to vanish. Editing nightmare. Don't care. Um, yeah, the kind of people that are going to buy the game just to look at someone's boobs probably aren't the sort of people that are going to stick around with the game for a long period of time. But with a fighting game, it's small enough where I think a sale is a sale and you kind of want as many as possible without undermining the value of the property. Does that make sense? Hopefully that makes sense. All right, I just wanted to address that point because I don't think I gave it any airtime in the original uh, recording of this and it is kind of worth bringing up. And so there's kind of a twofold purpose to this, which is first... I do think that there is a little bit of merit to going, 
well, they re- you know, they, they're cleaning up their image, but is that really to the betterment, I suppose, of the game? No one looks to Mortal Kombat 11 to be, like, a representation of the ideal, a representation of, yeah, this is what the world should look like. It's absolutely not. It's ultra-violent. It's insane. People get smashed up and cut up and bones broken, and then they just shrug it off just fine. So pandering to realism also doesn't quite work there. To me, it's about maintaining that tone of that 80s slasher movie. Maybe I've got that completely wrong, but to me, that is what I tend to think of in the same sphere as Mortal Kombat. The other factor is simply the sneaking it through, I suppose, and then introducing it later when fewer people are paying attention or fewer people simply care. It becomes like a desperation move to try and sell more copies, and as a result, just looks a little bit desperate. Fan service is always going to be one of those hot button issues and there's always going to be different limits for different people for what is acceptable. In my mind, Mortal Kombat 11, if they do want to just clean up their act and they do want to just have, you know, very, very conservative looking representation of women, then that's on them. If that's what they're going for, fine, do it good on you for sticking up for what you believe in. If they're doing this out of marketing, if they're doing this out of trying to slip this in later for a couple of extra dollars, ew. Just ew, I suppose. It's it's kind of gross, I guess. And that dishonesty, I think, is what I dislike. All right, guys, thank you for watching to the end. I mentioned at the start that I'd come up with a couple of names. Like, one of them I came up with is, like, you know, the the, the Omicide or something. The o- Omicide, which doesn't quite work. It's like a play on Ohm and Homicide, but it's it's a little bit too aggro. And like, one angry many. It's just, ew, it, I'm not angry, I suppose. I'm just grumpy. One grumpy many doesn't quite work, I suppose. I, I don't know. Does it need a name? I'm, I just keep looking like, you know, Jimquisition to me is like, oh my god, that mwah, that's a brilliant name. That's so good. But I'm not called Jim, and it's already been taken. So it's kind of, eh. You know, I can't, I can't use that. That's just a little bit too much. Maybe it doesn't need a name. Maybe I just need to chat in a microphone and people will kind of get what's going on. All right, guys, thank you for watching to the end. Regardless, if you do come up with a name, let me know. But it has to be a bloody good one. And let me know what you guys think of this as well. Um, is there a nugget of truth to this? Maybe, you know, the game does need a little bit of titillation just to go with that theme, just to go with that overall vibe of the game. Or maybe they are doing the right thing. Maybe they are changing for the better. Maybe they are changing for the worse. Maybe there is actually an SJW conspiracy trying to take over the world and eliminate all beauty and sexiness from everything headed up by Anita Sarkis. It was it was great doing research for this because Mortal Kombat 10 released in the middle of that the Anita Sarkisian hysteria. And so you get so many people just blaming her specifically for the changes to this game. Uh, to, to Mortal Kombat 10 from Mortal Kombat 9 when they just clearly stopped being insane um, yeah no that was that was superb to read I love it when you get nut jobs who just very clearly get very upset about Anita Sarkeesian like extremely upset not kind of like eh, I, I don't think she's quite right on one or two things she kind of has you know my, my viewpoint on Anita is very simple it's yeah she kind of has a point on some things I think she kind of misleads things here and there she's a little bit inaccurate in places but overall she's kind of got a good idea going uh, and I'm, I'm kind of with what she's saying but not to the degree that she's saying it I suppose uh yeah it's it's just amazing watching how people get really just out of their minds about this sort of stuff. Uh, so try not to in the comments. Again, understand that this is largely a subjective thing. And at the end of the day, if the creator wants to change it, then the creator can change it. That's always going to be their mandate. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Doodles.